uh, three to four months to do this. So this is the time to think about your lifestyle, stopping smoking, reducing alcohol, getting healthy with some exercise, eating really well and taking your folic acid. Because the very instant that the egg and the sperm get together, that's when an irreversible genetic code is formed for the future development of that baby. So these critical four months leading up to, up to it. And the health of the egg and the sperm really reflect the health of the environment in which they've grown. So really important to be thinking about your lifestyle. So in terms of how to have sex to make a baby, what we know is that the couples who are aware of their fertile time definitely have an increased risk of getting pregnant. And it also allows you to have a degree of control in what can often be a really, really challenging time. And knowledge of, of whether intercourse is being timed correctly or not really reduces a lot of unnecessary interventions and costs. I see a lot of, a lot of people who really just have no idea when to be having sex or a are just timing things all wrong so they pay money to come and see me when really had they known then they wouldn't have needed to see me so timing of sex really important so a few basics first of all we know that the egg can actually only be fertilized for a really short time after ovulation which is when you release your egg and probably only 12 hours is this is the egg actually able to be fertilized in an ideal world, you'd be fertilizing it in the first six hours. But on the good front, sperm can actually live in the reproductive tract for three days, and some papers say up to five days. So therefore, it isn't critical to have sex just at the time that the egg is released. It's critical to be having sex in the three to five days prior to that, so you've got some sperm hanging about, ready to fertilize that egg when it's released. And usually having sex every second day is sufficient. And once you've ovulated and your progesterone level goes up, then that completely changes the cervical mucus so the sperm can't swim through. And you really need good cervical mucus for the sperm to be swimming through. And in practice, the best time to be having sex in order to make a baby is one to do two days prior to the egg actually being released. So the most effective ways to determine when to have sex, you can either count your cycle, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, chart um, your vaginal discharge, and some women get really skilled at that, and I think most women can be taught about this, or else you can use some LH surge kits, and it's actually cheapest to buy these off the internet, so a place like Trade Me. Using um, temperature charts, which I know tons of people use, actually don't tell you when to have sex, they tell you when you should have had sex, but we'll talk about that a little more. So if we look at cervical mucus, because I think that's the best way to determine when to have sex, then what we can see on this chart is this is what your estrogen level goes like during a cycle, and this is when you release your egg, and then your estrogen level goes down and does a little zip up again in the second half of your cycle. And what happens with your mucus is your mucus really changes as your estrogen goes up and your mucus becomes much more abundant, it becomes much wetter in your vagina and it becomes much more like clear egg white. So that's what you need to be looking out for and as soon as you get that change, that clear egg white that you notice coming from your vagina, then that's the time to be starting having sex. And once your mucus changes after ovulation and becomes sticky and thick and white, then that's too late to have sex for babies, that's sex for fun. And um, so really it's that clear, abundant, wet mucus that you want to be focusing on in order to have a baby. If we look at this slide, then this is a slide about the likelihood of pregnancy versus when ovulation occurs. And what it actually tells us is the most likely day to be having sex in order to have a baby is actually not the day of ovulation. It's the day before ovulation and the day before that. So that's why waiting to do your LH surge is actually probably not quite as good as looking for your cervical mucus because that's going to allow you to get these two days, which are the best days to have sex 
in order to have a baby, which is one to two days prior to you ovulating. Many women use these LH sticks and they're certainly useful. So it tells you that as soon as you get an LH change and you dip these LH sticks in your urine, and if you're having an LH surge, then you start having tons of sex for the next 24 hours. And as I say, you can buy these cheapest off the internet. So if we look actually what happens across a cycle in terms of your hormones, then as your period gets started, then that's when you start to finally mature your egg. It's released mid-cycle and your body temperature goes up once your egg has been released. You get this big LH surge, which is what precipitates the egg being released, and that's what you pick up on those sticks. And your cervical mucus increases as response to the estrogen that's being produced by this egg. So um, that's what's happening in terms of your hormones across your cycle. If we look at body temperature charts, and, and I see a lot of these, I see so many people who say, look, I've been measuring my temperature, and as soon as my temperature goes up, we have tons of sex, but it's actually too late. So by the time your temperature goes up, it's when you've already released your egg, and that's too late. So the time to be having sex is, is in here, and once your temperature goes up, that tells you that you have released an egg, but it's too late to have sex in here in order to have a baby. The other thing I get asked a lot is how frequently to have sex. And the answer to that is um, you cannot have sex too often. And there is good evidence that, that the quality of your sperm actually improves with frequent ejaculation. So no one's ever died from having too much sex. So the answer is more is always better. And in the olden days, we used to say, look, save it up for two or three days because the count gets better. But now we're getting better at um, evaluating the quality of the sperm. We know that really frequent ejaculation actually improves your sperm quality. Now this is all well and good if you're having a regular period, but if you're having cycles that where you get a period that are outside every 21 days to every 35 days, then you may not be ovulating, and that's really important that you go and see a, um, someone to sort that out. Because you can only get pregnant if you're releasing an egg, and if you're having cycles that are less than 21 days or more than 35 days, you're probably not ovulating regularly, and go and see someone and get that sorted. The other thing is, if, you, if you're getting periods that happen really soon after ovulation, then that's also a, a cause for concern, and you might need some extra progesterone. The other thing I always get concerned about is women who have really terrible pain or, or pain during their cycle, and they may have endometriosis and it might be wise to get that checked out and it's also not normal to be having bleeding between your periods and if that's occurring you really need to be seeing someone and, and getting that sorted and also any funny discharge you know your discharge shouldn't be yellow green lumpy um, lumpy whitey or, or really terribly smelly so if you're worried about what's coming out now I've asked you to look at what's coming out please go and talk to someone about it so in summary, guys, um, be aware of your cycle. Time your sex according to when you've got that slippery, clear mucus. Using LH sticks can help, and they're cheapest to buy off the internet as opposed to through pharmacies. Basal body temperatures tell you you have ovulated, and that's a good thing, but you can't really use them to time intercourse. And timing sex for one to two days prior to ovulation is the, is the best way to, to increase your chances of having a baby. And sex every second day is probably sufficient. Abstinence is definitely a bad thing, so saving up sperm is not good, and you can't have too much sex. So guys, that's, um, that's my timing of, of sex uh, webinar. Uh, and if there are any questions, please... Please go ahead. 
So Nicola, do I close my presentation now? Thank you very much, Dr. Mary Bissell, for a wonderful um, talk. It looks like you have got a few questions coming through now. Hope you're happy to answer them. I am. So, um, so I've got a question on um, what's a good natural lube, and. It's a really important question because some lubes really um, kill sperm really pretty significantly. So a really good idea is you can buy a product called Preseed, and we think that's the most sperm friendly lube. Um, saliva isn't so great. Um, natural lubrication is kind of best. Um, so Preseed is is really what um, what I would recommend. Um, the next question I've been asked is another really important question, can a low libido affect conception? So the answer there is not. So a woman actually doesn't need to orgasm in order to conceive. And so therefore as long as you're having sex you don't actually need to enjoy it. And I know that's a terrible thing to say. It's just about ejaculating sperm into your vagina. Certainly if a guy's got a low libido, that's a different story because he clearly needs to be able to ejaculate and get the sperm into the vagina in order to conceive and so maybe you need to see your doctor. Um, the next question um, I've been asked is I have an irregular period, how can I calculate my ovulation period? And I think if it's irregular, it's really difficult. Sometimes some women are aware of that slippery mucus but if you're not aware of it, maybe it's a good idea to go to a fertility clinic and actually get some blood testing because if you just buy the LH sticks in the hope that you might get your LH surge, it can get a really expensive process. So maybe go and see someone about that. Um, the next question I've been asked is, I've recently come off the pill and my periods are yet to become regular. Will charting my mucus be the best way to predict ovulation? The answer to that is yes. And the pill actually gets out of your system really, really quickly. So if you haven't established that regular cycle, where you're getting a predictable period where you don't have no more than four to five days of variation and you're having a cycle occurring between 21 and 35 days, then you should be seeing someone because the pill's out of your system really quickly, so you shouldn't blame the pill. Maybe you've got some problems with your ovulation and go and see someone. So the next question I've been asked is, if I use LH surge sticks, does the LH surge occur a day or so before ovulation? Uh, the answer is, it depends when in your LH surge that you test. So my answer is, as soon as you see that LH surge, crack into it hard for the next 24 hours because you won't actually know where on the surge you are. So just crack into sex immediately and have tons of sex for the next 12 hours, or 12 to 24 hours, I should say. Um, the next question I've been asked is, my hubby has had motility issues. So would his sperm be lasting for three to five days? The answer is no. And so you really need to crack on to have very frequent sex. And we know that frequent sex is actually probably better for poor sperm and more important for poor sperm than it is for not for great sperm. So really having tons of sex is really important. Um, then my next question is, is it a problem to jump afterwards see the day after having sex, um, and the answer is absolutely not. So women get pregnant doing all sorts of crazy stuff the next day. So what you do the following day after sex actually doesn't affect whether or not those little swimmers are going to get to the end of the fallopian tube. And in terms of positions after sex, there's absolutely no evidence that any sexual position increases your chances. So it's just sperm ejaculated into the vagina. And we know women get pregnant standing up. 
lying down, missionary position, doggy style on top. It just doesn't matter. And the other thing is it's perfectly okay to go to the loo afterwards and it, it just makes no difference going to the loo afterwards. It's not going to reduce your chances because the fast swimmers are already going to be in your cervical mucus and they're already going to be making their way through. And the other thing I get asked a lot is about the wet patch. Everyone gets a wet patch afterwards. That doesn't mean that all the sperm has fallen out and it's just a, a normal part of sex. And once again, the fast swimmers will be already in the cervical mucus, so don't worry about the wet patch. Um, gosh, what a lot of questions. Um, the next um, question I'm asked is, my period cycles are well over 35 days and at different lengths. I've seen my GP to do blood tests and the one during my period, but because my period lengths, it's very hard to tell. Can I bypass my GP and visit a fertility person? Absolutely. So you need some help. And if you're having cycles well over 35 days, there is a problem and you really need to get that sorted and you're just wasting your time because otherwise um, you, you won't be ovulating. And so getting a lucky egg is, is really unlikely to happen. Um, so um, the next question I'm asked is, I never seem to get much cervical mucus come out. Is this a problem? No, it's not. And not all women notice it. But if you're not getting pregnant and you're timing your intercourse really well by in terms of um, when your ovulation is and know you're having lots of sex and it's just not happening, there are occasional people who don't get good cervical mucus. Sometimes if you've had say a treatment to your cervix, like a LETS treatment, then that might have damaged your mucus secretion cells and it might be good to go and see someone and have a talk about that. But not everyone notices the mucus. Um, my next question is, um, uh, I seem to have answered all of this one. Okay, um, uh, the next um question is, what do you mean about frequent sex when the male sperm is slow, motility issues? Yeah, three times a day? Yeah, I'm dead impressed if you can go three times a day. We say daily so we don't stress the guy too much. But actually, as I said earlier, no one's died from having too much sex, so go for it, often as you like. Um, the next question I've got asked is, I have PCOS. Are LH surge sticks okay to use? either saliva or urine ones, I've heard that they're not accurate for women with PCOS. I also have irregular cycles about 33 to 35 days, so finding it hard to track ovulation. So the answer is that sometimes the LH sticks are not accurate in women with PCOS because you might have, you might have a, a high LH endogenous level, so therefore you might not have a surge. In terms of Having a, a 33 to 35 day cycle, you might be ovulating, it just might be happening a bit later on in your cycle, more around day 20. So why don't you have a couple of months where you have sex, say days 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20, and then you'll have covered off that later cycle if you are ovulating. And if you're still not pregnant, go and see someone, you might need some, some plum thing. Um, the next question is, do you have any advice for sperm morphology improvement? Boy, I'd be a billionaire if I knew the answer to that. I think it's about the general, how do you make good sperm? And the advice on that is, just get the guy eating tons of antioxidants, so that's anything brightly coloured from the fruit and veg world. Get him on a product, an antioxidant product like men of it. Make sure he's keeping his testes cool. So don't let them do that hot yoga. Don't let them sit in a hot bath every night. Get them into some loose boxes. Um, make sure that he doesn't have a varicocele, so maybe having a doctor um, examine his testes and just have frequent sex. Make sure he's not smoking. Reduce the alcohol. Get him out doing some regular exercise so he has a normal BMI. So that's the current advice that we have about how to make great swimmers. Um, 